let's get started so that we don't take too long in this beautiful day. So welcome everybody. Thank you. This is the beginning of the, almost the school year and the end of the summer. It went by so fast. <laughs> but thank you everybody for spending another evening. I hope you had a good time off in the month of July. Um, we're going to start with the uh, reception of uh, our guests. And we're going to do our public comments and they are going to be uh, timed just like we did before. And Jim is going to help us uh, with that. So if you could uh, raise your hand so I can see you uh, in, the, in the chat feature and I can make, you can go in order. Uh, please make sure that everybody else is muted so we don't have any background noise. And I'll mute myself once you guys are talking too. Yeah. I don't see any hands unless I'm missing hands. Well, thank you for coming to the meeting. So just gonna repeat again that we are in the public comments part in case somebody just joined and didn't hear that. If you would like to speak, please raise your hand. We would have public comments at the end too. I don't see anybody. So any agenda revisions? Can you guys hear me? Any agenda revisions? No. All right. So let's move right into board operations. Uh, the first item on our agenda today was board uh, electing, uh, appointing new board members for the vacancies. So we're gonna move into an executive session so that the board can discuss. Uh, um, we thought that we could do that within 20 minutes. So if we, I could have a motion to go into executive session for appointing school board members. Move, move that we go into executive session to appoint new board members. Okay. I'll second. Chris and Lindy seconds. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, uh, Jim, could you please move us? Yes, and, and just to be clear, we're going to move um, all the board members. Is there any other any other guests coming in besides the board members and and uh, and the acting superintendent? Just the board members, actually, Jim. Just the board okay. members. No problem. Thank One you. second. Let me uh, yeah. let me fix that up, and I will. Uh, yeah, and, and Jim is helping us today because Mark is away on vacation flying back today. Yep. This will actually be my last board meeting, so it's, it's good to see you all. <laughs> yeah. It's a miracle, but we stayed on time. So, it, you know, it was, it was a great discussion and the board came to consensus. And I'm going to let Jonas uh, read the three motions for our three towns, Calais, Middlesex, and Worcester. So I move to appoint Maggie Weiss um, as a member from Calais. Can I have a second, please? Sure. Chris, that was you? Yes, it was. OK. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing no, the motion carries unanimously. And I move uh, that we appoint McKaylin LeClaire as a member from Worcester. Second. A second. Chris, okay. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries unanimously. Uh, and now Romney, M Middlesex. Uh, uh, I move that we appoint Ursula Stanley as a member from Middlesex. Second. So Jonas moves, Chris seconds. Yeah. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries unanimously. To thank you, everybody. I know that all of you are at this meeting. 
it, like I said in my email, you were all great candidates. So whenever there's an open seat or not, please, we will welcome you in our board. So thank you and for your willingness to, to serve your communities. Okay, moving right on. A notice of open meeting law violation in page three, our response, our public response. Jonas, do you have a motion? Hi. And I can, I can read the motion and have one of you. You're muted if you're speaking, Jonas. Sorry. Uh, so I move that we move to deny the asserted violation of the Vermont open meeting law as the board properly posted its agenda for the June 23rd meeting in accordance with the requirements of one VSA uh, paragraph 312 uh, D and the posted agenda specifically referenced the school time proposal set forth in detail on page 172 of the published board packet thereby providing full notice to the public of the agenda item to be discussed. Thank you, Jonas. Could I have a second on that? Second. Second by Kari. And now we can have discussion. Uh, our lawyer, Bernie Lambeck, I feel he, I can see him. He just joined us too. Any discussion, any questions? from board members. Scott. Uh, I, I just am curious as to what we as a board may have learned from this um, episode and how we might be able to um, keep it from happening again, keep something similar from happening again. This uh, evidently member, at least one member of the community, perhaps more felt blindsided by action that we took and that I know I, I was the one who moved in the first place, but um, perhaps there are, there are steps that we can take to, um, to make this kind of thing less likely or um, to, to kind of identify issues of particular concern that, um, that are likely to, to cause controversy and um, that may touch a nerve here or there. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Scott. In uh, in three point three, we're gonna uh, address that that part too. But it, like I say, my letter to to Sorsha, we can do better, and we're working on that. We should have reached out to the community, especially students, before so they understood what was in. Uh, for them and what uh, you know what this change meant for not just the community but also for the for the student body uh, we know that this change is going to allow us to give better opportunities for for the kids and we also as a board as a board on we didn't fully understand but we understood that we were taking a risk right but in COVID times we knew that we need to move quickly but this is just the first step uh, on um, and we're going to need the community to make this a success. Uh, Jen, do you have something to share? I, I, I just see you're not muted, so I didn't know if you want, had a comment. No, no, I don't. Thank you. So, so I, uh, Stephen, look. Um, to to kind of respond to Scott's ask for reflection and how we move going forward. Um, I. And we're not going to do it now. <clears throat> we're not going to do it right now. But I think um, we should establish a practice when a proposal comes forward. Um, along with that proposal is um, a, a discussion of how that information was shared, who it was shared with, um, uh, people. You know what the support for it was and what the opposition for it was. Um, so that we establish a clear expectation that um, it might even need a policy, but we establish an expectation that there's a company um, documentation or explanation on um, opposition and support um, for whatever groups might be impacted. 
Thank you, Stephen. It's a good idea. Chris. Um, so I am not voting on this measure because I have a conflict of interest here. Um, but my comment is in terms of um, um, for the future is having more detail in the agenda, especially if we're going to have a money item that is uh, $241,000, actually sp specifically putting it in the agenda that this is what we anticipate the cost will be because that will, will signal people. That'll be more information. So having um, a more detailed agenda so that it's clear what we are going to be um, voting on, I think would be helpful. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. So, can, can, are everybody ready to vote? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? I abstain. Yeah, I abstain. Thank you, Chris. Okay. So that satisfies the public notice. Uh, Bernie, since we're here, since you're here, I might as well <laughs> ask for your counsel, but I think we didn't have any other questions. So that should satisfy respondent to the violation. Okay. Thank you for being with, with us, Bernie. Thanks. Okay. So let's move on into the student dismissal of community uh, student engagement plan for that. So on September 1st, uh, we were thinking, and, and this, is just a, this is just a proposal. Uh, we were thinking of having a community engagement around uh, this stop this topic. So having a quick overview by Stephen and uh, on, on the purpose uh, and to hear, um, you know, having a, dis a description from Stephen uh, of, of really the overview and, and from Jen uh, too, uh, on, on what this means as a whole for the, for the, for U32. And then just very briefly, and then move, moving immediately into a small, small group so that we can actually hear from members of the community. And what I wanna do this cause is that, you know, we wanted to uh, have guided questions is in, in my experience and in experience of all other board members too, the conversation is easier when you have some guided questions. And the reason to move into smaller groups would be so that people feel more comfortable uh, expressing what they, uh, what they're thinking. So the overview would be as a group as a whole, then we would immediately move to, to smaller groups. And the questions that we were proposing was uh, uh, three questions. What excites you about this change? Uh, what concerns uh, do you have? And lastly, what questions uh, do you have? Um, that's what we were thinking because we we feel you know strongly that we're going to need the community uh, in order to make this a, a success for extending the days. So I'm just putting that on the table. And does the board feel comfortable with that? The, this community engagement we were hoping to break it in two. So I, I want to uh, we want to talk about the board retreat too, but I also want to. Um, uh, so I want to use the September 1st for, for, for those two, the board retreat and community engagement. So if we could talk about this part first because we ended up breaking it in our packet for you guys. Jonas? Uh, I, I look forward to that. I think that's a, it's a good, a, a decent structure. Um, this is not a, um, this is not something that we have been very good at uh, recently in the last couple of years. So I look forward to doing this, um, you know, as one in what should be a whole lot more, um, you know, intentional sessions of engaging with, uh, with different parts of the community. So maybe what I'll do is I'm going to bring the 3.5, the board retreat and put it together because when uh, Jen and I were brainstorming and I was, uh, had a conversation with Carrie too, I was trying to figure out the best way to, to do this. So the idea would be to use this, uh, the first uh, 
Wednesday of the month for some type of community engagement. In this case, we're going to have a, a purpose for September 1st. Uh, we felt like we also wanted to do a quick uh, retreat so we could start at five uh, o'clock with the, with the retreat. So five to 6.15, the purpose of the retreat would be basically taking stock of where we are and, and either um, just reaffirming our goals so that we have some guidance before we, because we're going to move pretty quickly into um, budgeting too. So we felt that we needed to have at least a touch base conversation in the transition point where we are right now. So do that from five, if five to six fifteen, and then it's give the board a little break, and at six thirty to seven thirty, when people have got out of work, do the the community engagement uh, around two topics, uh, which would be the um, what we just talked about, the extending the day at U thirty two and uh, COVID, because today we don't have enough. The guidance is still a little. Uh, not clear from, from the AOE. Everything is in flux today, especially there were other things coming out. So we are hoping that by the kids will be back in school, we'll operate with what Jan just sent in the letter to families that I think you all got a copy to uh, operate like that. And then we, we would do both of those topics on September 1st and that with the COVID part, we would do it as a whole then have the, that be the first part and have Maria and Jen uh, talk about it. And then we would move, uh, have Stephen do the explanation of, uh, of the extending the day, and then we will move into small groups. But the questions on COVID will be at large. With the board support, that plan, uh, since September 1st was already marking our calendar, so it will make it easier than try to find a date. Stephen? I just, for the board retreat part, we've only got an hour and 15 minutes. I'd like to see it be very focused with a specific one or two things we're gonna cover and it's shared with us ahead of time. So if we need to prep or we need to think about it. Great, yeah. Thank you. Okay, sounds like, hey, Chris? Um, in anticipation of the community forum um, around the early, the, the longer start times, um, yeah. are we going to have specific information about the buses in terms of what the time impact will be in terms of uh, routes and when students are expected to get home? I think we may have experience with it by then, um, but are we going to have that type of specific information? And um, are there, um, you know, kind of setting out also the plan if there are mingled uh, elementary and high school students on the same bus, how are we going through that? Whether or not we're gonna have a very specific um, fact information on how that is being handled in the district. Cause I think those are the questions at least in part that will come up and we should have answers for those. Yes, I don't wanna speak for both Stephen and Jen, but I, Yes, that would be the that would be the plan to have to have all of that information, Stephen. Yeah, I was just going to say we'll have that information. The buses are being finalized this week, and so we'll have that information um, prior to that meeting, so that you can review as well. Great, thank you very much. Yeah, and and we're also everybody. I'm going to count in in you guys also to helping bring people, like person, you know, bring people to the meeting, so that we make sure that there's uh, diverse. Uh, diverse opinions and thoughts so that uh, we make sure that everybody's at the table when we have this conversation. Just uh, is it going to be live or Zoom? It's going to probably be Zoom. Okay. Yeah. Jen. So if for board clarity, this meeting today, I, you know, some of us really wanted to make it do it in person. And we thought hard uh, about it, but after you know the the change in guidance in the ten days, it felt like if we did it in person, we really all needed to be masks, uh, and at school, so it would be hard to. We don't have the sound system good enough for us to be able to. So any unnecessary gathering, really, right now is. I, I feel it wouldn't be, it, you know, it would be prudent, but we would be looking at uh, Maria and 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 Jen for guidance uh, on that. Good. Okay, so 
in uh, 3.4 in meeting uh, schedule. So this is a question for you, Chris, actually, and the policy policy committee, because the policy committee is a little smaller. You have more people now. The, the finance committee and the uh, quality committee in our board meetings, we have specific, you know, the, it, we're not, it's now saying community engagement the first of the month, and that's also quality. We don't have a set date for for policy, so it's something for you to to think about with your policy committee. It would be nice we, for for the public and for us to have whether it is the second Tuesday, whatever day of the week it is. Right now, it varies, which makes it really hard to to keep to keep track. Right? No, we'll so, we'll. We're, we're, Day and, and our norm has been to have a specific day, and I think it was Tuesday uh, from like 4 30 to 6 30. Uh, but then I think toward the end of the year, when more meetings were being scheduled, uh, we had to pick what we could uh, when most people could attend. But we will pick a specific date, um, meeting time. Okay, that would be that would be great. So then we can finalize the, the meeting schedule. Okay, yeah. I just you know wanted a thumbs up from from the board that using the first Monday for community engagement, the first Wednesday for community engagement and, and possibly some board if needed, some, some board um, uh, meeting. And then using the third Wednesday for sure for our board meeting, it's, it's still good for everybody. Lindy. And I'm not on the policy committee, so I shouldn't be saying what I think they should do, but um, I'm wondering if they- Lindy, I thought you were voted on to the policy committee. I thought so too. <laughs> I thought it was on education you and, quality. You and Scott. You and Scott. <laughs> okay, I'm on policy now. You're right, because yeah. you, there, there weren't enough people. All right, yeah. what I was going, so I can say, and you have to listen to me now. Um, <laughs> I was thinking if they were always on Wednesdays, it, kind of helps me when people are making meetings to say Wednesday evenings are out for me because I just save them in case we have an emergency meeting or we have things. So that's helpful for me, but I can make it work if I know in advance. Gary? I, I think this topic relates to the board goals and our work plan for the year. And I so I think that we should revisit it um, at our retreat, and my, my main concern right now is is um, the staff capacity to support the committee meetings. So I think that committee chairs should be thinking about you know what needs to happen in the next few months and have a conversation with Jen or other whoever you work with on the staff to really check and see is it appropriate for us to continue doing what we have been doing. I think from my point of view, ed quality is kind of on pause right now until I, that we're all confident that Jen has has the capacity and the staff has the capacity to support that work. Thank you, Gary. So, it, Chris? Um, following up on Carrie's suggestion or comment, um, let's discuss at our retreat, if that's the proper place, about um, the board uh, hiring a staff member, either quarter time, half time, that um, is de dedicated to doing like board work in terms of, and that would relieve some pressure, I think, on the central office staff, uh, which has other things to do other than than like getting um, you know our packets together and getting them out and and things like that. That actually might be a way to go uh, without adding significantly to to staff. Um, and, and freeing up time. Just a suggestion. We'll, 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 we'll talk, Jen. I think what Kari is trying to say is that the, the, the pressure always falls in the person that is in charge of the instruction, right? So if we're talking about quality, it would be, you know, it would be Jen. So there's always ways there's going to be time because I think we have the capacity. Melissa is great and Renee and Michelle, they all like multitask to be able to put the packet together. But there's a lot of other, you know, other people that need to be involved in the leadership team with some of that. So I think is narrowing what, what we want to accomplish. So in those goals is what... Uh, but, but it is a good suggestion. So we'll see, depending on what the, where the need is, mm -hmm. um, we'll, 
we'll take it from there. I want to ask the board if it would be okay to move number eight up because we have uh, it's been a requ it's been requested and family is scarce, so I would like to be able to move them up. So if we could have the executive session for the student matter now instead of at the end, it would be really helpful. And since we've been staying on time, I think that. Do you need a motion for that or yes, consensus? Please. Uh, I need a motion maybe. to go into executive session for a student matter. Okay, I'll move uh, that we go into executive, that we first amend the agenda to move number eight to the mm -hmm. to now, and then move that we go into executive session for a student matter. A second? Okay. Sorry, I, that was you, Carrie? I missed who was it? I thought it was Steven. Stephen, okay, Stephen, sorry, uh, there was some echo and I was looking down typing. So all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, so please, uh, Jim, I, do I, I I do have a question for, um, who are the new board members again, just so I can make sure they're in the new, in the room? Uh, no, we are not, they won't be joining the meeting until the next board meeting, uh, okay. Jim, and then we're going to go, I, I need to amend that motion to, we're going to go into the executive session with uh, Jen. Excellent, okay, I will and add the, And the family. Uh, and, and Flora, I would invite Stephen as well to okay. join us. So Stephen Dellinger Pate and the family name, uh, Jen? Yes, uh, Bond. Bond, okay. Okay, let me, let me look that up. Okay, I have uh, have them here. I'm gonna go ahead and open the room now. Thank you all. Thank you. So who would like to volunteer uh, the motion to accept the recommendation from uh, our super acting superintendent? I, uh, I move to accept the recommendation of the acting superintendent uh, in a student matter. Thank you, Jonas, a second? Second. Thank you, Scott. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any oppose? Aye. You're opposing? No, no, it was, you're I was behind. Muted, yeah, oh you're, God, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, your audio is behind. I'm like, what? Like, uh, any abstain? Seeing none, the motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay, moving right along. So now we're going to move into the student report. Sorry, we had moved the agenda around to because we thought we could have the oath for our the new board members. So that's why it's a little moved out. But do we have, I don't know that we have students. Oh, Anna, you're here. I'm yeah. Here. Yeah. Okay. Okay, hold on. Let me grab my notes. Um, thank you for letting me have my little report. As, as we all know, it is summer, so I don't have a whole lot to report. Um, personally, in my life, I'm upcoming senior, which is kind of kind of a lot and kind of exciting. So this summer um, and coming into this next week, I'm going to be looking at colleges. Um, and a lot of people in my grade are, you know, going out and looking at colleges, starting to see what they're wanting to do with their life. Um, this summer was a lot of working for me. So I've been working at Positive Pi and doing a lot of that. So that's a really big thing of becoming 17 and 18 is you have a job and you're making money. Um, recently, we got our schedules for next year. And I, as a student, I'm really looking forward to knowing if we're going back full time, half time, and just how that's all gonna work. Uh, we've had a lot of summer homework for me. I read a book called The Fine Balance for my English class and for my stats class, I'm about to start a book, um, which will be really fun. And um, on August 26th for the upcoming seventh graders, it's Meet Your TA Night. And I am uh, grateful to be able to take part in that and help out with that. So um, that's about all I have for reporting if anyone has questions or um, hopefully I'll get the answers about school. Thank you, Anna. Questions for Anna? Jonas? Yeah, so uh, first, Anna, a comment. Your internet connection is the best I think it's ever been. 
Uh, <laughs> congratulations on your upgraded bandwidth. That's great. Yeah. Um, and uh, second, you know that we talked, uh, you know, at the last meeting and earlier in this meeting, we've talked about the uh, extension of the school day at U32. And as our student representative, I wondered if you had any comment or feedback or questions about that. Um, so I did see, it looks like 255, if I'm correct. Um, Steven, I see a nod. Yeah, so I'm not particularly psyched about it um, just because I'm a senior and I want to, you know, but I think it is, I think it's for like the reading or having like a little bit more time for stuff. And I think that's really productive to have um, and to a certain extent it'll be beneficial and help us have a little bit more classroom and learning time and maybe catch up from last year. So, I mean, it's not the best thing, but I think it'll overall be a good thing for a school. Thank you, Anna. I think that's very honest and fair. Fair, yes. Very grown up. <laughs> Thank you. And Stephen? I just want to let the board know that we've already put out the call for a uh, student uh, rep to uh, have our junior representative to the board. So we already have that going. Um, and uh, we've already got some students who are interested. I just wanted the board to know that we are on top of that. And Anna, I'll need you to uh, help me uh, do a couple little interviews too. Um, and uh, yes, we are going back full-time, everybody. There's no hybrid schedule. Um, Stephen, we can also email about this later. Um, let me know about the interviews and anything else. Thank you both. Is that... Anything else for students? Any other questions for board members? Thank you so much for being here and, uh, and good luck in your senior year and have fun looking at colleges. It's an exciting time. Uh, I'm gonna pass the baton to Jen and move to 4.2, Superintendent Report, COVID-19 update. So last week, the Agency of Education released some guidance um, still pretty short and vague around, um, around COVID-19, but we are using that guidance right now as we're preparing for, the, uh, for welcoming our students and our staff back at school. I incorporated that guidance into the letter that I sent to um, staff and families regarding um, what to expect. And right now the biggest thing is that we will all be masked um, and indoors for the, you know, until further notice. And we've started that practice now in our building. So when adults are together, um, they are wearing masks. That's true in our schools and that's true at central office as well. We will re reiterate the um, idea that people should always stay home when they're sick. And we'll be learning more and more about surveillance testing and contact tracing. All of that is still to be determined. The leadership team spent um, many hours last week with Maria Melikos, who is our new COVID-19 coordinator, who I want to introduce to you all in person in just a second. And, um, and the questions are starting to pour in. So I anticipate that Maria and I will be spending a lot of time together um, in consultation with a leadership team to answer questions and ensure that, um, that we're really clear and direct with families that we're assuaging concerns and that we're enacting all of the health and safety protocols. We're also, both of us, uh, ear to the ground a lot at the state level as well. Maria will tell you um, with whom she is connected at the state so that um, you know that we're, you know, our eyes are wide open as we're doing that. So I think right now the important thing is for the community and for you all to put a name and a face together. So if we could ask Maria to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about where she'll be and how to reach out. That would be great. You're muted, Maria. Got it. Don't double click. Only time in my life, don't double click. My name is Maria. I'm the new COVID coordinator. Um, and like Jen said, we're working with the information that we're getting from the state. We're gonna assume that this year is gonna be very similar to last year and that we are gonna need to be super flexible um, and pivot when pivoting is called for. Um, so we're spending a lot of time watching community transmission. We're watching um, 
transmission within the schools and what is happening in other parts of the country as well. So as the COVID coordinator, um, I work with the Vermont State Nurses Association. I work with the Department of Health very closely. And I also am part of a group of all of the COVID coordinators from all of the districts across the state. Um, we don't have to do everything the same, but we um, are all trying to make things as logical and as streamlined um, as possible um, while, while learning from each other about what worked last year, what didn't work last year. So um, I am both slightly daunted by the task ahead and um, also looking forward to, you know, to all of the challenges. So I will be at central office. I don't have a number just yet, um, but you can reach me, of course, on email, and I'm open to any questions or comments or suggestions that anybody may have. Thanks, Maria. I think the other thing that we know for sure is that um, vaccinations, ventilation, and masks are really important, as is hand washing, which has always been important and remains important. And so we are paying attention to that and encouraging um, all of those things at the same time. Our community has um, done an incredible job coming together to take care of each other, and we are anticipating that same collective ethos going forward. Yep, just to build on that, we have the state um, has asked us to pick up three vaccination clinics. We'll be doing two of those at U32 on two different Saturdays, Saturday, August 28th, and Saturday, the 9th of October. And we'll be doing a third clinic on Saturday, the 18th of September at Berlin Elementary. Those will be open to the public. Um, and we'll make sure that we get all the information out. We're also working with the state to do surveillance testing throughout the year in all of the schools. Um, at the end of the year last year, the state had us only testing not, um, unvaccinated staff. This year, the testing will be open to vaccinated or unvaccinated staff and students. So that lo those logistics will be coming down the pike and they should be um, interesting, but I suspect just like last year, it'll be a rough start and then we'll all get into a rhythm and um, I'd be really, really happy if this year we got the same uh, results as we did last year, which was that we really only had two positive cases found by those uh, surveillance testing, which showed us that all of the preventative measures and precautions that we were taking were really working well. Um, so this year, knowing what we know about breakthrough cases with vaccinated individuals, it'll be very interesting to track what's happening within this. Any questions about um, the COVID-19 update? Yes. Oh, Sorry. Anna has her hand up to one of our board members. Oh, Anna? It's OK, Anna. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I don't know if this is a question for you, Jen, or more for Steven or something. We're, as a student, I'm curious if we're masked, is it still the same setup as last year where you're, do the teachers have their own classrooms or, you know, is it still the same thing as it was last year? Yeah, Stephen, you want to answer Anna's question about the setup? Yes, so we are um, not going to be potting. So Jen mentioned the three major things that will um, help us keep uh, COVID at bay, which is masking, ventilation, which we have excellent ventilation in the school, and uh, vaccinations, which we have a pretty high vaccination rate um, as we understand it, but we'll still be encouraging more. It will, because of those three things, we will not need to do pods and we will maintain physical distancing where possible, but for the most part, we will probably be a lot closer and we will have movement in the hallways as well. Um, so we're, we're not going to be quite as uh, locked down as we were last year, because we've learned a lot in the last year and science has told us a lot more uh, in between. Masking and vaccinations are two of the big ones. Thanks, Stephen. Chris, did you had Chris had a question? You're muted. Muted. I had my mask. Um, is the masking going to be a permanent? Uh, feature at U32 or I, I think I'd read somewhere where the 
AOE said after 10 days or so, it could go away. Uh, and so I'm just kind of, which is, which, so what are we going to be doing? We have, we have indicated right now that we are masking until further notice. We're awaiting some guidelines and guidance around the 80% of students being vaccinated and how and when we can get that information along with ensuring that our nurses and our school personnel have all the information that they need beyond COVID-19 to safely welcome our students and take care of them in the buildings. So we've specified until further notice. Okay. Has there been any change in terms of outside visitors or is that still um, kind of locked down? At this point in time, we are expecting that um, we would have visitors and that they would be masked. That's our expectation right now. I think that um, honestly, we will be revisiting again and again and, uh, and being flexible and nimble to pivot. But as of right now, we are expecting that visitors would come and they would be masked just like every other person in the building. Okay, thank you. Jonas and, and Stephen. Uh, um, so Stephen, if, if you want to go first, I've actually got a, a couple of questions and I don't want to monopolize before everyone's had an opportunity. I just, um, I think you've got a good explanation at the high school, um, what's going on at the elementary schools. So right now, similarly, our, we'll all be in masks at the elementary schools until further notice. Um, we are looking at having the same practices and protocols in all of our buildings so um, we'll have homeroom you know classes like we typically would uh, but our kids will be attending their allied arts classes they will be eating in ways that are safe i think one thing that i could say to enhance this um, this report is that Again, to the extent possible, we want our practices to be universal in all of our schools. And in some cases, there are some nuances. One in particular is the cafeteria. And so Maria is in the process of consulting and visiting each of the principals in each of the buildings to figure out the health and safety protocols around uh, eating breakfast and lunch at school. So Stephen? Oh, sorry, Jonas now, is that? Yeah, um, so can you guys tell me more about uh, how the surveillance testing is gonna happen, how often uh, it'll be available to you know each, each kid, each uh, staff member? Maria, can you share what you know so far? I can, um, I don't actually know uh, what the, um, how often it's gonna happen. I don't know if it's gonna be monthly like it was previously. Um, they are revamping their entire system of how they are doing it. So it's gonna be very different from how it was done last year because we're talking about testing kids now. Um, and they're talking about having dedicated software and scanners for barcodes for labeling test tubes and kids five, on, five to seven need to be tested by an adult. Um, so there's going to be logistically some very different ways that we're going to handle it. So they just, just this week, the AOE had us sign up um, if the districts were interested in being a part of it. So I don't have the full details. Um, as soon as we do, I'll make sure that uh, we get it to Jen and they can get it to, and she can get it to the board. That's great. You know, I'd be particularly interested to know if this was, it would be an opt in right or if it would be a random sample each you know okay no it's an opt-in we'll be sending out electronic consent forms for parents because this is a medical procedure and these are minors um you will only need to sign up once for the year i understand and you will be automatically enrolled in the testing um so that will be interesting to find out if there are times that parents don't want their children tested um etc but but again they just changed yesterday that they decided that they would test it used to be only unvaccinated staff and students so mainly they were focusing on the under 12 population which is what concerns us with the delta variant um, but they just decided that because of the fact that there are so many breakthrough cases that it would actually make more sense to go ahead and spend the resources and take the time to test people whether they're vaccinated or not so that will definitely change the game in terms of time requirements 
um, and the amount of equipment needed, uh, especially for U32. That'll be an interesting um, morning whenever, you know, once a month or however that works. Uh, so I'll let you know the details as soon as I get them. Okay. Uh, thank you. That's uh, uh, great to hear. Um, you, you talked about, you know, uh, discussions with the other COVID coordinators around the state, and I wonder what that group is talking about in terms of vaccines um, and steps that might be taken to maximize vaccine uptake, particularly among staff. Um, so right now, our big concern is how do we protect our three to 12 year olds um, when the state is not making it very easy for us, right? Without a state of emergency order and a government mandate, um, we're faced with a whole lot more pushback about what families would prefer for their own children. Um, so honestly, adults have the, have had the ability to be um, vaccinated. We will continue to talk to people about the, um, about the benefits of vaccination. Um, but right now we're really starting to focus on um, around the state, what can we do to try to maximize people who are willing to vaccinate their under 12s, right? So adults tend to say, I don't mind, I'll take a vaccine, I've never been hurt by one. And then the 12s and ups have an opinion about it. Younger children are more scared of needles in general and people are less likely to use anything that they perceive as experimental on smaller children. Um, so I, I, I think we're all trying to work on how do we make that happen? It's also, we can't just have a vaccine clinic at school. No five-year-old is gonna get vaccinated without their parents present. Whereas a whole lot of the 12 and ups were happy to roll in and get a vaccination without parents present. So we've been focusing a little bit more on how to target that audience. Um, I, I honestly, there hasn't been any discussion about staff. We're pretty, well vaccinated at the staff level. Um, those aren't numbers that I can share for obvious reasons. Um, and, and one of the things I wanna talk about is that there's a lot of what's gonna come up of HIPAA violations. Um, so for me to disclose somebody else's vaccination status to you could potentially be a HIPAA vaccination, but, uh, uh, sorry, a HIPAA violation. But for me to ask another human their vaccination status is not a HIPAA violation in any way, shape, or form. HIPAA is about healthcare professionals sharing um, medical knowledge uh, unnecessarily with other people. So that's something that we're fighting a little bit. Um, we do have a good bit of anti-vaxxers in our communities. And I think we're kind of hoping that, that the 80% will be enough. Uh, I don't know if that really answers your question. We don't have any right now sort of agenda about trying to talk to adults some more to get back to the original question. Un un understood. Uh, and I, and I, I appreciate the, the, the depth of that answer. Uh, a couple of questions for, for Jen. Um, first, um, you know, how much are we going to encourage outdoor learning until the weather turns? I thought that was a great success uh, last year. I hope that that's going to continue. Um, and also, do you have a sort of break glass in case of emergency um, plan if there is an extended outbreak? Yeah, I think um, I'd answer two of those questions in two ways. One is I think that our students and our teachers derived a lot of um, joy and excitement from learning outdoors. There was a lot of investment in that. And I think we would encourage folks to be out when it is making sense, both in terms of health and safety and the educational outcomes for our students. Um, we have some good setups from last year and things that folks are excited to try again. And um, do we have a threshold right now? No. But are we going to think about exactly how we would respond to ensure the safety of our community? Yes. And I think that that's, that's in part one. I'm, Maria and I are going to be talking all the time in consultation with the schools. Um, and again, keeping our ear to the ground so that we'll be ready to respond as swiftly as possible. Any other questions? Chris? 
I have right. a question. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm muted. I sorry, Chris, I just had one more. It was following up on on your question about masking the 80% vaccination threshold for removing a mask mandate uh, in the schools. You know, I think the AOE and the state in general have done a really good job over the last 18 months keeping the state safe and you know following the AOE guidance has worked really well for us. But I've asked the last two people who sat in that chair the same question that I need to ask you. Can you see a scenario in which you would be prepared to take more extensive steps than provided for by the guidance? I think that I would have that conversation in consultation with the with Maria and the leadership team, and we're going to do take the measures we need to ensure that our kids are safe and healthy. Um, so I, I won't say definitively yes or no, but I would say that our kids' health and safety is of the utmost importance, along with our staff. Thanks, Jen. Sure. Chris? So, Maria, how are you? This is a question to you, because I think in your uh, conversation, you said that there were obstacles that I thought you said were coming from the state in terms of uh, providing, making sure that our three to uh, 12 year olds are, are, are better protected. Um, and you, I think you referenced the lack of a state of emergency now. Um, can you clarify what you meant by that? I can. So um, I, I spoke to somebody with the AOE recently to ask them to clarify one a piece of their guidance. And I was told very clearly that that is not considered guidance any longer, that without a state of emergency, they cannot provide guidance and they're not willing to take any of the liability for making those decisions, um, that they're placing that pretty squarely on the districts to decide what ought to be better. So they're calling it a memo. We're calling it guidance, but they're calling it a memo only. Um, the concern will be if we have family members that feel strongly enough that decide to take any kind of legal action against the district for forcing their children to mask without a government mandate. My preference, and I think everyone in the leadership's preference, would be given very clear guidance by the state about what to do so that we can all share that burden of liability and the stress of trying to figure out if we're doing the right thing. Um, one of the things that Jen and I talked about is that um, something I heard really early in 2020 when this started was if we do everything right, it will look like we overreacted. Um, and if we don't do everything right, it's going to be a mess. So I feel like people have fatigued um, to the point where people aren't willing to to dig in anymore. Governor Scott just today said wearing a mask is a personal choice. Um, I would prefer personally a lot more strength in the guidance that came in about keeping children safe, right? We, we were riding on our sort of our coattails of last year of saying, but no, we had very little, no school in school transmission in our district and very few cases comparatively. Um, but now knowing that vaccinated people can both be symptomatic and carry this disease and that the rates of pediatric COVID are rising with the Delta variant, um, I, as a nurse and as the COVID coordinator would really appreciate a whole lot stronger of a backup and a stance from the state. I don't believe it to be exactly an obstacle. I'm not sure if what I stated that sounded like that. I just think that it, they make it a little bit more difficult for us to really put everything in place that would be necessary to keep everybody as safe as possible. Um, does that make sense? It absolutely makes sense. And I have a follow up for uh, Jen, for you and Maria whether or not it would be helpful to you both um, to have the board take a very clear position um, for, for guidance that would support uh, what you're trying to do in, in terms of uh, relation with the community. I think I would answer that, Chris, by saying, I haven't heard from enough members of the community yet to know if that would be helpful or if we're feeling okay. We have the forum coming up on the 1st of September, and I think that is a great opportunity to hear the concerns and questions and then figure out 
if there needs to be a, a response from the board that's different than what's happening right now. That, that's what I would think. Okay, thanks for that response. Yeah. Scott? Um, thank you, Flora. Just to, just to sort of play off what Chris was saying just now, I think that you know, in the event the state does not step up and the people who know about these things in our district um, need to have the, the backup, um, I think that's exactly what the board is for, to take the heat, um, to make decisions that some people might not like but that are necessary to ensure the safety and the proper functioning of the school system. That's our entire function. So um, I hope we're there when, when that need arises. And Thank I, you. I, yeah, I, I agree with that, Jen. And if, I think there, there is gonna be a letter coming out from different agencies uh, today. And I, I think as public officials is our duty of care to do exactly what Scott was just mentioning. And I, I personally will hope that we adopt the guidance from the Pediatrics Association from Vermont and just uh, go with that. They're willing to support us. And you know, when we get there, after we hear from community, I think that that is what we should be doing. But that's just my personal opinion on, uh, on that. Okay, so let's move right on because we are short on time, but this was a very important conversation to have. So you're next, Jen. <laughs> okay. So I think I, I've said already once tonight that, um, that we're moving forward and making plans and paying attention to the um, general landscape in terms of the virus. So I feel like I keep letting folks know these are our plans now and they are subject to change. We may need to pivot, but um, we are getting so excited to welcome our kids and our staff back. Uh, tomorrow, we start restorative practices training, uh, welcoming our new, year, new U32 staff members and other folks from around the district that want to take it. New teacher training begins uh, next Monday. We have some paraeducator trainings coming up uh, regarding handle with care and trauma-informed practices. Our first in-service day is August 19th. We'll be in our buildings for that. And then August 20th is our district in-service day. Uh, as of right this moment, we're scheduled to come together um, and I, we're still considering um, whether we'll pivot to a, a virtual possibility or not. If you look at the district in-service site, I, we've marked it very clearly that um, folks should be checking in regularly for, um, for updates and for possible changes. I would invite you all um, regardless to join us to celebrate the opening of our schools on the morning of August 20th. Um, we'll be celebrating our years of service as we have. We'll be recognizing our UVM Teachers of the Year and we'll be um, starting uh, talking about um, integrating this experience that we've all had and looking forward to, um, to becoming an even stronger community together. We also have plans right now in place for an outdoor community celebration. I wanna give a big shout out to Amy Molina who has been spearheading this effort, working hard to um, engage our sports teams and community organizations with tables and having some fun activities and some food vendors and music. There have been some calls out to the community. You may have seen them on Front Porch Forum and, um, and the plans are coming together. Again, we'll con con continue to think and consult Maria to make sure that, um, that the conditions warrant, uh, uh, warrant the celebration that we can do it in a safe way. Um, and the other thing I, I mentioned before, and I just want to reiterate again, is that um, as part of our district and service plan, uh, we're making sure we knew last year when um, our previous COVID-19 coordinator, Elizabeth Worth, visited each school to talk to staff members directly and answer questions. That was incredibly um, important and well-received, and we are planning for that again as well. Um, Amy, I see you've popped in. Do you want to share anything more specifically about what's in store for August 23rd? Uh, hi, Jen. Thanks. Um, no, nothing really. Just I'm really excited about it. I don't think Jen mentioned that we've got um, about six or seven 
so far food trucks um, that will be coming, especially some local ones. Um, so really just hoping to attract um, all of our students and, and families and, and community members, whether they have students in our schools or not, to come and um, kind of celebrate the end of the summer and just really look forward to um, uh, what we are hoping is gonna be an amazing school year. Thank and you. if anybody has any suggestions or would like to volunteer to help, um, I, you know, where to reach me. <laughs> Thanks, Amy. Any, any questions about the plans for the beginning of the year right now? Just thank you for doing all that. Do you want to move to the next one, uh, Jan, or is there more to share on the? No, I'm happy to move to 4.3. 4 4.3 SR, 4 yeah. SR recovery plan, because we're going to talk about it in the finance. I really want to go over it right now. Yeah, I'm going to, I will provide an, just an overview for you all. And um, so you know that we had been engaged in uh, what the state was calling recovery recovery planning in the spring. A number of you were involved in that process with us where we gathered a lot of data and analyzed it, did some preliminary planning, and then made a plan for going forward. We um, had the, the concept of recovery hadn't sat, didn't sit very well with us. We talked about sort of moving forward, recognizing the strength and resilience in this community, um, understanding that the school wasn't great for everybody before the pandemic and that those inequities um, in many ways had been exacerbated during the pandemic and thinking about how we can do even better, learning the, um, incorporating the lessons that we've learned. So the, the moving forward plan was programmatic in nature. Um, we're talking really about those three pillars, uh, social, emotional, health, and well-being, um, engagement and truancy, and academic achievement and success. So we put that together and now is the time to marry that with the ARP ESSER funds or the Ameri ARP ESSER um, or American Recovery Plan ESSER funds. Suzanne a little later will share a little bit more information about the specifics um, about that plan. But essentially as part of ESSER sort of marrying the program and the finance, we are responsible um, and obligated to engage in what the, what's called meaningful consultation. And so Michael Sherwin, huge shout out to Michael. Michael has put together a site that got posted and went live today. So on the right off the district website, you'll see an announcement about um, ESSER funds, what they are, and you'll see our moving forward plan, and there will be opportunities for community engagement. We can amend the plan along the way. Right now, we've really incorporated student data, things that um, board members and community members have seen in the past in our continuous improvement plans, and trying to move those things forward uh, to think about those three pillars. Um, I think the other thing that I would say is that um, the first option, the first sort of public opportunity right now that we're thinking about for meaningful consultation is at the community celebration night, um, we'll set up a table and we'll have copies of that plan available and we'll be able to answer people's questions. I'm sure it's not going to be the main attraction at community fun night, but it will be a possibility for folks to connect. There are videos to um, sort of make the text a little bit more palatable and comprehensible on the ESSER site itself. And, um, and there's a feedback form there as well. So we'll be monitoring the feedback form. We will also look for a date, um, at least one other date to really explain the plan with folks. But I would encourage you to, um, to check out that site, board members and the community at large and start to engage um, more thoroughly with what we're thinking about. And then we can talk a, a little later in tonight's meeting about some of the um, financial implications of that plan. And that's Thank you, Jen. <laughs> Any sure. questions? Um, seeing, 
seeing none, I think that was very clear. Uh, let's move to 4.4, uh, Central Vermont Career Center uh, Governance Study Committee. Uh, this is really the first update from, from that. As you know, I'm your representative on the very um, Career Center Board, and then uh, we are involved in this study. I sent you a pretty detailed update, so I was wondering if you had any questions or if you want me to give you a little background, however you want to do it. Are there, are there any specific questions from my little update? Chris? Um, Flor, is there anything in this uh, potential governance change that would impact our district's governance? Not our district governance. It's basically what we're what we're doing is think about it in simplistic ways because we all went through this. It's like the 706B of technical center. Okay. So we're creating a district for the technical, for, for the tech center, and we're writing articles uh, of agreement. And this would help, uh, you know, Barry is taking the responsibility of all the decisions uh, now, and they for a while have been wanting to share that, and it will give us more say into the quality of programs and hopefully be able to have a broader uh, reach into getting kids from middle school into the program. This is all right now uh, a, a wish, right? We're working with Michael Luis. It would be put out to vote to the voters. So you would have all of the details. Uh, but we are one of the districts that uh, this hasn't been done in 15 years. So we are kind of trailblazing through this, but we have a great committee. So it is Michael DeWees really is uh, doing all the writing and we have Ketraline and Chris Leopold working, working with us. So when we have uh, the actual report, which we've been going through and we just got some, we had our meeting yesterday. This is supposed to be done by the end of September. So we had a, you know, kind of a deadline. That's a self-imposed deadline by the committee. And so we will have more to share before it goes out to, to vote once we have the, the logistics of it. Okay, thank you. Anybody, Scott? Thanks, Laura. I wonder if we can maybe have the Career Center as a recurring regular feature of our board meetings, um, because it is, I think, an, an extremely important part of the, you know, the configuration. And um, it, it would be nice to, to try to, um, just as you were saying a moment ago, uh, see how to better um, put the pieces together in order to get the most value for our students out of this resource. Sure, yeah. And uh, Stephen and, and Jen would be in, this is a separate group that you guys appointed me to because I was already appointed to the, to the meeting. So the other news there that I could say in public is that Jody is the new director. So our own Jody is now the new director, which is, which is great, right? So I also wanted to, I don't, you know, she's not in our meeting tonight, but I, for, uh, those that didn't know that, eh, that's where Jody is right now. So when we meet as a, um, as all the representatives from the different high schools, eh, she is the director. And this group is a similar group made out of that group that is working on the study. So it's, yeah. Any, I'm assuming everybody had a chance to read it. So I'm gonna move, uh, move on. It, to that, and when we have more details, I'll I'll, I'll share it to you, uh, share it with you. Uh, okay, let's move on into finance. So, uh, let me turn this off. My phone is ringing. So Suzanne is with us, and this is her first meeting with us. So I'm gonna let her do the first part. We're gonna look go quickly. So I'm gonna introduce Suzanne for those of you who haven't met Suzanne yet. We just welcome her. Good evening. There you are. I'll let you do the celebrations because that was a great way to start our meeting. And sure. go ahead. Uh, I'd love to take a minute to mark Lori Bebo's retirement and celebrate her 27 years of service with Washington Central. I feel really fortunate to have Lori as a mentor and fiscal advisor for the upcoming fiscal year and cannot thank her enough for her continued support 
of the district in this capacity. I think it'll help make the transition so much smoother. It already has. Uh, I've been incredibly impressed by the entire fiscal staff at Washington Central. They are all extremely knowledgeable, hardworking, and committed to maintaining the highest level of fiscal integrity. Uh, Year-end procedures in NEMRIC were performed on June 30th this year. This is something that is not usually able to be completed so quickly by school districts, many times not completed until mid-July at the earliest. So I want to emphasize this was two weeks earlier than I'd ever seen it completed before. Uh, preparation for a timely close begins in April and takes considerable effort at the building level and from the fiscal staff. So thank you to Lori, Virginia, Matt, Penny, Renee, Shannon, and all the school building staff that helped accomplish this. Another shout out to the fiscal staff for our preparations made to complete the FY 2021 audit, which was last week. And when I say complete, uh, they did their in-house uh, work with us last week. So the audit isn't actually finalized, but uh, the bulk of the work is done. Another thank you to Lori, Virginia, Matt, Penny, and Shannon for their efforts in facilitating an incredibly smooth audit with a special thank you to Matt Kittredge for taking the lead with the preparation this year. I believe it went really, really excellent. Thank you, Suzanne. So we went through, we had our uh, finance meeting uh, yesterday morning and I'm just getting my notes out of here. So I'm gonna go a little bit uh, out of order uh, from what our agenda says. And I'm gonna start with construction because that's where we started uh, first in our finance meeting. So in the construction capital projects, I know that Chris is here with us and I just wanna introduce him too so that everybody is a face into Chris O'Brien. Hi Chris, do you wanna say hello? Hey everybody. <laughs> Do you want me to go through it, Chris, or do you want to share quickly? No, I can. I can uh, go through this floor. Yeah, thank you. So um, the projects that we've been working on, the capital projects we've been working on over the summer, um, I sat down and conferred with Bill Ford, got a an update. Um, this was updated August third. So uh, the Berlin stormwater, Rumney indoor air quality and central office indoor air quality projects are scheduled to be substantially complete by 816 per the contracts. The Rumney gym floor is substantially complete at this time and is ready for the opening of school. Replacement of the sidewalk at U32 is complete and ready for use. Um, the U32 stormwater design and permitting is in process and bidding is expected by February of 2022. Uh, followed by construction summer of 2022. Berlin parking and drive replacement, uh, phase two paving is completed. Uh, that was done, it was complete on 7.30, so July 30th. At this time, all projects are expected to be completed within the board approved budgets. The board will receive a financial update in October. And uh, once the work is completed and the final invoices are paid, Substantially complete means available for its intended use, but not necessarily 100% complete. There may be final billing, O&M manuals, balancing, and other closeout items to complete. We will have the ability to operate the systems in manual until the controls are completed. Thank you, Chris. Are there any questions from board members on the improvements? Okay, so I, I, I do wanna share with everybody the, the, the big project in Berlin, just so that you all are informed. Uh, we have the storm plan going on uh, there, ended up being a teeny bit bigger than we originally uh, said it was gonna be. So we had to remove some apple trees that had been planted by uh, community members uh, before, and we had two dead maples that we were replacing too. Uh, I just wanna say publicly, because I, received a couple of emails and a couple of calls from the community members that our intent always was to take care of the trees. The trees were put in a trench. It's a difficult time to move trees and our weather has been not the best. So some of them uh, didn't make it. 
Uh, a few of them are being picked up uh, by Dave tomorrow uh, at Berlin, and he's gonna, you know, nourish them back to to life and plant them somewhere else in within the community. But the contractor is uh, replacing the all of the trees that perished with new trees. And there would be two new maple trees that were already on our budget in the Berlin uh, in the front by the fence. And the, the last thing would be that the storm pond for a change is going to be very beautiful because they put so many plantings in the, which is making it really great. Uh, let's move on into the end of the year uh, fund balance uh, report. Uh, Suzanne, do you want to give us a couple of highlights? I don't want to go through the entire report unless the board has some specific questions. Uh, ARP ESSER is the ESSER 3 grant, which is now called the American Recovery Plan Elementary and Secondary Schools Emergency Relief Fund. Uh, the allocation for that grant is $2,480,120. Uh, the grants prior to that were ESSER 1 and ESSER 2. ESSER 1, ending the year, uh, having spent two. $243,331 and ESSER 2, $1,108,477, which was up from an original amount of $923,131. And the reason I highlight that, that came up in our finance committee meeting with a question uh, regarding the change and increase. And I did confirm with Lori that the, the grant actually changed and increased uh, over the year. Uh, due to the increase, Washington Central was able to utilize that grant money to pay the $1,000 one-time uh, checks to the staff, and this was reviewed in more detail at the June 17th Finance Committee meeting, uh, if anyone wants to reference um, minutes from a meeting. So that was the ESSER fund. Uh, the final fund balance for the operating fund. Uh, <coughs> <laughs> um, uh, if you look at page 22, which was also page 10 in your finance packet, you'll see the projected fund balance is $2,666,659. There are currently $596,203 in currently reserved funds. The available operating fund balance is $2,070,456. This is $1,361,846 over the fund balance reserve target of 2%. Uh, if you look at page 18, the final transactions recorded following the June financial report, those are indicated there and show the difference uh, from the June 23rd meeting till now. The capital funds at the beginning of the fiscal year totaled $2,573,393. Uh, projected ending fund balance is $3,817,377. And on page 23, you can see the accounting for this fund by school building. I know that's pretty important, so. Uh, food service began the year with $214,208. The fund lost $87,712. The loss was intentional as the AOE notified the school district that the net cash resources for food service programs exceeded the amount allowed by law. So this year's budget allocation from the general fund of $149,115 was not transferred. The ending fund balance is $126,496, which brings us within the allowable amount. Pages 24 through 30 of the packet provide you with food service comparative information for uh, actual meals served, revenues and expenses over the past year and prior years. Other, pro other enterprise funds, community connections, ending fund balance, $80,834. Dental program, $107,213. Uh, health reimbursement, $645,262. And then there are permanent funds uh, that ended at $5,773. Scholarships and other miscellaneous, $82,276. And student activities, $150,467. Special revenue funds, 
uh, these are miscellaneous grant funds, the total in and the total out equal each other because the expenses are, are actually run out of other funds. Um, they total $3,093,241 for the year. And so the fund balance ends at zero. This fund did not include the CARES Relief Fund, the Efficiency Vermont grants, or the Food Service grants, which are in other, are tracked in other funds. And that ends the end of your fund balance report. Thank you, Suzanne. Uh, so now let's move to SR, SR3 uh, update. Uh, so in SR2, uh, Suzanne gave an overview of all the funds that can be used at this, uh, at this time. Uh, and these items are included in the CDC guidelines for nursing, COVID-19 coordinator, uh, and cleaning supplies, staff, daycare after school, school bus sanitation, and administrative leave, and fiscal time grant processing and, and the recovery and moving forward plan that Jen just talked to us. So we wanted to have that explanation so you could link the instructional part to the ESSER funds uh, too. And we have uh, two motions, and I'm wondering if Scott, if you are prepared, or do you want me to read them? Do you have them right in front of you? Thank you. And then we can have discussion. Sure. Um, I move that the board reserve fund balance subject to a reduction in grant funds for the following one year counselor positions. U32 1.0 FTE, Callis 0.6 FTE, Berlin an estimated 1.0 FTE to be filled, East Montpelier 0.4 FTE, Doty, 0.2 FTE, and Rumney, 0.2 FTE, for a total estimated cost of $365,000. Thank you, Scott. Can I have a second? <laughs> I'll second it. Thank you, Lindy. Scott. Wendy, second. Any discussion? Questions? Uh, uh, Scott. Um, since we had the the question that Chris posed yesterday at our at our meeting, um, you know the uh, the phrasing subject to a reduction in grant funds um, it, it may throw one slightly off balance. Um, my understanding is that the intention, what this means is, the intention is for us to pay for these counselor positions with grant funds. But if for some reason, those grant funds are reduced or become unavailable because of you know um, limitations, then the reserving of the fund balance is a backstop so that we'll get it done one way or the other. Is that correct, Suzanne? That is correct. And I did confirm that with Lori and she noted January 2021 meeting that uh, the same exact language was used. Uh, she did say that the word from could be used instead of in it's uh, the intent is to say uh, the grant funds will be used when they're available. But for now, we have to reserve the fund balance. So yes. So yeah, so we had discussion at our finance committee and with Jen's council and the, and the members of the finance committee, we decided to stay with the same language that we had used uh, and that we were familiar with. And thank you, Scott, for explaining in case there was any doubt <laughs> on that. Any other questions or are we ready for a vote? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Hearing none, the motion carries. Yeah. Okay, second. Um, I move that we reserve from the fund balance, again, subject to a reduction in grant funds for the following one year math interventionist position in Callis for 0.5 FTE for a total estimated cost of 
Thank you, Scott. Can I have a second? Kari, I see you on, or John, Kari, okay. Scott and Kari, seconds. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Hearing none, the motion carries. So the last part of our finance committee was the VSBA dues. And there was a letter included in the packet. If most of you are familiar with what VSBA does. If, could I have a motion and then we would have discussion? If the board, the comment, Scott. I'll move that the board approve the um, dues for Vermont School Boards Association in the amount of $7,858 for 2021-2022. Can I, I, will, I will second that in a little bit of surprise. <laughs> he, I, he, I won't he, disappoint he, you, Jonas, I promise. So, yeah. <laughs> it, this was not pushed, Jonas. He, this came up in the financial meeting and he made it full heartly. Uh, it was his idea. So uh, second by Jonas. Uh, any discussion, any questions? Yeah, Kari, I did bring you up in the finance committee saying that you would have voted with me and I didn't even have to. <laughs> it was good. Any questions? Uh, Scott, yes. Questions? <laughs> Thank, um, well, this, <clears throat> um, I, I'll have to kind of inflect my voice at the end of this in order to make it sound like a question. Um, but um, because, you know, uh, Jonas has certain expectations that I cannot um, fail to meet. Um, and because uh, I think, believe very strongly, in fact, that complacency is the enemy of um, every organization, that uh, I will vote, having made the motion, I will vote against it. Um, because I think that VSBA, for all of the fine work that it does, is in um, serious need of, of reform. Um, <clears throat> from my perspective, it epitomizes the model of government by um, private club of insiders. And uh, this, I think, is something that Chris's suit goes to the heart of. And I would, um, I would hope that the SBA will um, take itself as not as a private organization, understand itself really as an important part of the constellation of public entities that are involved in school governance in Vermont and behave that way. Thank you for your opinion, Scott. Uh, any other? Uh, comments or questions? And now, you know, uh, Scott, I'll take your comments as, as, sit, as the sitting vice president of the VSBA. It, you know, it's, you know, it, you know, it's hard to hear criticism. I, I understand where you come from. I think if you have you know, a really a big board that is trying to meet, meet the needs of all the students in Vermont and we collaborate, uh, you know, we've spent this past three days trying to collaborate with the state to have better guidance for just COVID-19. And, you know, there's we spent a lot of time in the legislature and we support multiple, at the end of the day, we are all here for students. So I, I, I take your input seriously and I'll, I'll share it with the board and I hope that everybody feels comfortable, you know, coming to trainings and participating on it. We're here, you know, the board is here to serve you. So with that, uh, I'll take a vote. Uh, all those in favor of the motion uh, by Scott, uh, second by Jonas, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. No. Any abstain? So the motion carries with one no vote. Okay. 
let's move on to the next. Yeah. Yeah, I just lost my, move all my stuff from the, the Okay, six to consent agenda. <laughs> I That's move right. to approve the minutes of uh, June 23rd and July 26th. Second. Second. <laughs> you can be third, Scott. Okay, uh, but two, the third. two of you, the two of you need to take a little break too. Like let others speak. <laughs> We're just trying to move it along, Floor. I know, I know. So Chris, Chris seconds. Okay. Any discussion? Sorry. Any, yeah, any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. But I guess I didn't ask for abstain, but I heard everybody's aye. So, okay. Approve board orders. Lindy. I have them open. Um, the first one I have open has two dates on it. Um, yeah, six seventeen twenty one for the general warrant, and five seventeen for the capital, and there's a total amount of one hundred fifty seven thousand three hundred sixty three dollars sixty nine cents. Thank you. Can yeah, let's do the next one and do, do them all as in a slate. Is okay. that okay? We have three. Yeah. Okay. The next one is June 24th, and I'll just give the total since it's the same date. Um, the total is 10,000, or ooh, wait a minute, is that really 10 million? Oh, $10,725,178.98. Right. All right. And the third one is July 1st, and general and capital and the total is five hundred twenty four thousand three hundred seven dollars ninety four cents thank you lindy lindy can you tell me the days on the first the first one there i wasn't prepared it was two different dates yes um the general amount was six seventeen twenty one and then there was a capital amount on 51721, but they were totaled together at the bottom. Okay. Could I have a second? Second. Thank you, Stephen. Okay. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the board orders as submitted, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? The motion carries. Personnel. Let's move to page 48. Have them in front of me, Jonas. Do you have them in front of you? I do. Um, I move that we approve new teacher nominations for the 2021 2022 school year for Amadeus Dorfman, a special education teacher uh, in the district at large, it looks like. Jake Plouffe, a school counselor at U32, uh, to be paid for using ESSER funds. Justin Lechte, a school counselor at Callis, also to be paid for with ESSER funds. Amber Larrabee, a school nurse at U32, and Holly Taylor, a kindergarten first grade teacher in Callis. Thank you. Could I have a second for that first part of teacher nominations? Second. Thank you, Scott. So Jonas and Scott, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of her, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Seeing none, the motion carries. 
we didn't have any res retirement resignations or leave of absence. So the change in FT time, uh, Jonas? Or I you... move that, yep, I move that we approve uh, the following changes in full-time equivalents uh, for Mary Langevin, a school counselor at East Montpelier from 0.4 to 1.0 FTE to be paid for using ESSER funds. Sharon Spector, a school counselor at Rumney from 0.6 to 0.8 FTE uh, to be paid for by ESSER funds. Maureen McDermott, school counselor at Doty from 0.2 to 1.0 FTE for uh, paid for by ESSER funds. Uh, Michael Close um, uh, as a music teacher at Rumney um, uh, adding 0.1 FTE uh, for a total of 0.4 for Mike Close. Uh, Samantha Mishkin, a rummy music teacher from 0.4 to 1.0 FTE total. Jen, is there any changes on that? I see that you were, yeah, do we yeah, need to end it? Hold on, yeah, my, um, got to plug in quickly before I can. Yeah, don't. Um, sorry. Sometimes I don't get noticed that the computer's going to die. Yeah, I believe that Maureen McDermott, that is a typo. It's a 0.2 FTE increase, but Maureen is currently 0.8. So that should be. Um, gotcha. That, sorry. Yeah. So I would amend I would amend the motion for Maureen McDermott to reflect a change from 0.8 to 1.0 FTE. Using ESSER funds? Yes, using ESSER funds. Thank you. Could I have a second? A second. Thank you, Chris. Any discussion? Stephen. Uh, why the big music increase at Romney? Romney had a vacancy um, to fill. We had a staff member who is not returning. And so folks are coming back to, they're filling in, in at Romney together to do that. Yeah, for, for those who don't know, Mike Close is uh, also the music teacher at Doty. I'm just surprised we've got nearly a one and a half position for music at an elementary school. No, sorry. Um, I wasn't clear about that. Michael Close is part time at Doty. He's going to do a point one addition at Romney to help fill that vacancy. Sam Mishkin teaches at East Montpelier part-time. She's going to do the 0.4 at Romney. So it's a 0 0.5 FTE music position at Romney that's filled by those two existing staff members. I'm fine. I, I get it. Any other questions? Seeing none, all of those in favor of the change in FTEs, please say aye. Hi. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries unanimously. Um, and that concludes that part, unless I'm missing any. I'm looking at you, Jen. No? Okay. I don't think we're missing anything. <laughs> All right. So I was hoping for 8.30. It's 8.12. So even with that, we did pretty good. Uh, so any reflection? We didn't put it here, but since, oh, yes, we did. So any uh, reflection for the board and then we'll move into public comments. We have a long list of future agenda uh, items. Uh, Jen? There, there were two other items for future agenda items for that I wanted to bring to the board's attention. Uh, you just talked tonight about the Central Vermont Career Center, revisiting that more yeah. regularly. And we had um, gotten a request from, or a reminder from Tom Badowski that we'll need to revisit the Berlin Newtown Center request at some point soon. Yeah. yeah. And then we, we brought up at the, at the finance committee to the looking at the food service. So, right. Okay. All right. Any Floor, can we? Uh, um, I'm glad that Jen talked about the um, Berlin Town Center. I think that's something we should attend to sooner rather than later, just so Berlin knows where we stand on this. Um, and so, with these future agenda items, do we end up putting them 
I mean, can we target some that we're yeah, we'll, and yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll prior we'll prior prioritize. Uh, Jen has already, and Melissa had reached out to Dan Richardson, who was our attorney. I'm not sure he's will continue to say somebody in his office will take what he was doing because he's taking a new job. So, uh, oh, Dan, Dan, Dan. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Uh, so. I'm assuming, but, but yeah, but in any event, he, we, we have, he has some information for, for us. We didn't, you know, we didn't know if we would have everything for this meeting and we were trying to make sure that we wouldn't overdo, you know, sort of over try to accomplish for, for today. But we will, when we sit with the agenda committee, we will go through the, okay. try to prioritize that. Um, any other board reflections? Kari? Um, yeah, I had uh, just a few things. One is, um, Floor, I thought you did a good job facilitating tonight. Thank you. And I also appreciated the packet materials, especially the financial reports. It's nice to see continuity, and that's really helpful. I had one request that the agenda show the page numbers of the packet materials, if possible. It makes it easier when we're toggling back and forth to find things. And then the last thing is really for the board. I, I suggest that we consider a practice of writing a short summary, say monthly after our major meeting and sending that out. I see, I see uh, Scott's reacting to this. U32 board used to do this. I think this might be a good time for us to take this practice up and sort of enhance our communication with the community. And I'll I'll shut up, but I, but I um, first I'll I'll uh, volunteer to do the drafting of the first one unless somebody else would prefer to do it. But so can I can I follow up on that? Um, I'm in the dark here, so you may not be able to see me. But um, over the past two months, um, Jill uh, Olson and I just staged a forum. You know, like just basically come and talk with us for our community. And one of the things that they really wanted. Uh, was uh, some type of summary of our board meetings. And so um, with Lisa on the, on the Zoom here, what we uh, floated uh, was whether or not um, just having Lisa, if she was willing, um, summarize what the, the meeting, you know, the highlights of the meeting. Uh, not the minutes, but, but a more condensed summary of that and just posting that on Front Porch Forum. And also uh, posting the agenda on, on front, porch, front porch form as well before the meeting occurred so that you didn't, community members didn't have to go to the website and download it there, just be able to pick up the agenda um, off of the uh, front porch form sites. And those are just suggestions. Um, Lisa, you know, if she wants to say no, you know, no, that's certainly up to, to her, uh, but then just having some of the summary like that done, I think Harry, you, you hit it right on the head that would be very helpful for uh, community members. So Carrie, uh, just one sec, Scott. So you, Carrie, Carrie had expressed this uh, when we talked before the meeting and, and I think it's a good idea. I'm, I'm not opposed to having uh, Lisa do it. I, I think it has to have the flavor of the, of the board, right? In, and, and put it out by by the board. I think that's what the community is is looking is looking for. I I did wanted to post the agenda. We didn't get the page numbers until this morning, and then by the time we got it out, I got it out to front. It was too late, so we it was just uh, it, you know last week everybody was in a retreat, and then in, uh, in still we. So I apologize for that. We were trying to do our best, and there were some people on vacation, so we did change send a revised packet today but it was a little too late and it was too late to to post it but uh, i would take the responsibility of posting the agenda on the if carrie you would be willing to take the responsibility and maybe share it as we go along with other board members of doing uh the takeaway of of the meeting for everybody and then scott and then lindy Thanks very much. Um, I'm very happy that my thunder is being stolen right and left here. Um, I wanted, um, I wanted first of all to commend Chris and Jill, and Ursula and Patrick and the Middlesex people who are making these monthly um, gatherings 
happen um, under the under the roof of the bandstand there next to Rumney. Um, <clears throat> they were kind enough to let me sit in on the one that I was able to make back in July. And um, I hope to be able to make future ones if if it's something that you continue, Chris. Um, I, it's, uh, it's the practice that I think uh, I, I would love to, to do something similar um, in Calais. Uh, love to see it happen. There are opportunities I know in, in Worcester. It's harder with, um, you know, COVID 2.0 on the rise, but um, for the time that it can be done outdoors and masked if necessary, um, I think the, the, the physical presence of actually being with people is, um, is really powerful and as, as incredibly useful as Zoom is and accessible for people who are busy, who can, you know, maybe check in from home after work where they would not be able to, you know, go to a, um, to a, a separate location. Um, nonetheless, for those who can go, I think it, it, it has a completely different quality that is really important and really useful to have. Um, and, and Kari, I am grateful to you beyond measure for volunteering to um, write up. Um, remember that Marilyn and Dorothy used to kind of um, trade off uh, doing write-ups um, in olden days. Um, and you're right, it's something that we always would do in, in U32. And I will be happy to backstop you or, you know, trade off if you want. And, um, you know, I, I promise to write in my usual, you know, bland and colorless fashion. So um, that's the hope, Scott. <laughs> anyway, um, I think all of this is is really good. All of these summertime <laughs> summertime creativity great. is, is yeah. <laughs> great. Lindy, um, I I think we should probably each step up, like um, Kari was saying. He'd take it this time, and um, I think asking Lisa too is a good idea since she's paid a flat fee to do our minutes oh. <laughs> and. Um, so I think that maybe she's sitting there saying, oh, how do I say no? But um, I think we can just at the end of meetings, and I think back when we were taking turns putting it on Front Porch Forum, we did that a couple of times, and then we got out of the habit. And I think on our reflection time, we just take time to say, who was it? And maybe we get the minutes quickly, not quickly, but as soon as Lisa could get them to that person, they summarize it and get it up. However, we do that. That sounds great. Thank you. Those are all great ideas. Um, any public comments? Please raise your hand. I don't see any, unless you guys see any, I don't see anybody. And if I don't see you, please just speak. I don't see any hands up. Well, hearing none, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. And it would be a few minutes before. I make the motion to adjourn. Thank you, Lindy. <laughs> I have a second. Second. Thank you, Jonas. And before we adjourn, I, I think we should just wish our staff and our administrators uh, the greatest of uh, luck uh, opening the school this year. We are um, just impressed with, with their effort and their dedication. And um, they know that we're behind them 100%. You're here. Yeah, that's very well said. Thank you, Chris. And thank you, everybody. And yes, good luck. We'll see you after the opening of school. And Hopefully, a lot of us will be able to join us at the in-service if you do it in, in person or remote. <laughs> thank you. And thank you, Jim, for jumping in and to helping today. OK. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Everybody, thank, thank you. you. Have a nice day. Thanks. Thank you.